Hi guys, so I've been painting lots of the Hero Quest figures over the past couple of months and well, kind of thought it was about time I got around to doing all that lovely furniture that comes in the Hero Quest packs. And I have to admit, for a board game, these pieces really are very highly detailed. Uh, so yeah, the slap chop method is going to work perfectly on all of these. So I'm going to paint obviously the main sort of box set here that you can see, but I've got loads of the add-on quest packs as well, so I'm going to be painting those too. So starting off, yeah, going through every single little miniature and priming in black. As we all know, this is my go-to method whenever painting, well, miniatures or terrain or anything really. Um, yeah, good old priming in black and then dry brushing with white. So I'm often asked about what sort of white I use, um, and to be honest, it's whatever white I've got loads of. I do sometimes find though with the uh, the cheaper whites, like the one I'm currently using here, uh, what I sometimes do is go over everything, let it dry, a uh, good sort of five, ten minutes or more, and then go over it again. Because you do find with the cheaper whites, when they dry, they do sort of go, well, a bit more greyish, which is fine, because uh, then you get that variation of some areas being sort of like a, a nice white white, and some areas being a bit grey in between. So yeah, it's all good stuff. So yeah, guys, whatever paint you've got loads of, use, uh, use that. Because we all know, yeah, paint's not cheap. So doing the dry brushing, you are wasting a lot of paint. So definitely go for the cheaper option. So as mentioned, I have kind of gone through all the uh, the extra Hero Quest packs that I've been buying. Um, just so I'm going to do, well, as you can see, a full-on big batch paint of everything. Uh, yeah, this is what I mean by the old sort of one's been painted twice, one's been painted just once. Um, so yeah, so if it doesn't look like it's sort of white enough, bright enough, again, this is where this sort of technique, we'll all have our own sort of approach to it and our own sort of like preferences on how it looks. Some people might look like it to look darker, some people might look it to look lighter. Um, and this is the joy about painting. Yeah, we all do the kind of, well, a variation of what we want. So, um, so yeah, like you guys watching me paint, I watch other people paint. I take parts of what they do, um, adapt it, and do the bits that, well, I enjoy and I like. But one thing I'm sure we can all agree on, and that's batch painting, is definitely a way to go when you have got loads of items uh, that are going to have a lot of similar colours. So, yeah, as you can see, yeah, there's going to be lots of brown in this, because there's lots of wood effect areas. So I'm using the good old Army Painter Speed Paints, and yeah, they do have a lot of browns in them, which is great. Um, I have got my, obviously, like, top three, four... Well, top three, four colours of all of them, as in the browns, the greens, the blues, and all the rest of it. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got a variety of browns here, just to sort of mix it up, just so everything doesn't look exactly the same. And that's the joy of the slap chop painting, prime in black, dry brush white, and then literally just go over the areas in whatever colour it is you want that to look like. Um, and yeah, you haven't got to worry too much about doing any highlighting or any shadow shading or any of that kind of stuff. As well, the speed paints do all the work for you. Um, and as their logo goes, yeah, less time painting, more time playing, which is definitely a good motto to uh, yeah to live by. So I've made a couple of homebrew games already for Hero Quest, and yeah, absolutely love it. Um, I've got another game in a couple of weeks' time, so just working on the next sort of uh, adventure for the heroes. Um, so yeah, I will be 3D printing some bits and pieces off. Obviously, I do have a nice abundance of well tables, chests cupboards, fireplaces and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, I think I do need to do some sort of beds. Um, well, and possibly some mimics as well. Good old uh, chests and beds and things that turn into monsters. Yeah, definitely did a few of those to surprise the heroes. As mentioned earlier, yeah, I really am impressed with these uh, these pieces and the amount of detail that's in them. I say, because this is obviously a board game um, and yeah, the pieces in it are just amazing. It's like all these wooden bits, there's lots of nice sort of grain looking stuff. And this is where the old speed paints really work so well. Uh, the more detailed an item is, um, yeah, the better the speed paints work. As there's more nooks, crannies, crevices, whatever you may want to call it. Uh, for all that lovely paint to sort of pool in and make darker areas, which is just awesome. And also dragging your brush in one area, that'll certainly help as well. Just to add in a bit more sort of like wood grain effects, which is just, yeah, I say I can't keep saying it enough, it's just awesome. I love speed paints. They do make things so much easier. Uh, as I always say, yeah, it's worth painting the lids or doing testers, just because some paints, uh, they're very different from how they actually look on the image to how they actually come out. Um, so yeah, this is definitely one of those. It definitely comes out a whole lot darker, which is fine, because if you know it's going to be darker, then yeah, 
you're not going to be too surprised when you do go to use it. Um, yes, yeah, so even like these little chests, lovely lots of grain in these. If you like what I do and you haven't yet subscribed, it would be awesome if you can hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell. As I do produce a couple of videos every week of me, well, painting items. As that's kind of what this channel is primarily about these days. Um, yeah, lots of lovely miniatures and terrain pieces. And most of the things I primarily do are to do with Kill Team, as that is one of my favourite games that I'm still playing every week. Um, as well as obviously the Hero Quest, which I only got into recently, but absolutely love it. And like with a lot of games and things that I do, um, yeah, when I get hooked on something, I get hooked on something. I go from 0 to 100 miles an hour uh, in a matter of seconds. Uh, and this game, yeah, love it. Obviously, I used to play D&D, absolutely love that game. Uh, and this game, it's like playing the, uh, the well, the original game of D&D, the basic set that I kind of used to play back in, well, the early 80s. Um, and this, yeah, very re reminiscent of that. Nice, easy, simple rules. But obviously, you can bring in your own homebrew rules just to make things, well, more fun, more gameplay, and just very enjoyable for everyone. So that's pretty much everything painted now using all the browns. And so this is where obviously doing a batch painting is so much easier. As yet, you use the colours once, throw them all on, and then you can move on to, well, whatever the next colours are. And in this case, I'm using the War Paint Fanatic range. Uh, yeah, nice little range of metallic colours. As obviously, whenever I do metallic colours, I do like to put a you know, the black wash, or a dark brown wash, or even a light tone wash. Basically, a wash <laughs> over it afterwards, just so it has that sort of uh, bit more of a contrast to it. It looks a little bit sort of less neat, a bit more dark, gungy, and yeah, definitely worn look. So yeah, good old uh, war paint fanatic range, and then a good old wash afterwards. So obviously these go on really, really well. Um, yeah, coverage is awesome. So nice, deep, rich colours, which looks great. And just like with the weapons, yeah, I've gone round, done everything with the gold. Um, and now I'm going to go around and do everything uh, with the bronze. So I say, there's obviously the three colours I'm using here, the gold, bronze, and then silver. And doing it this way really means I can get through all this furniture rather quick. Um, yeah, I think I did it all really in about three hours, maybe. Which wasn't too bad. Um, again, there was no rush. I was just enjoying myself, having fun, listening to some 80s radio, and yeah, just chilling out. And again, that's what this hobby is all about. It's about having fun, and the great thing obviously with this hobby, I'm painting something that I'm then going to use in a game, uh, which is just makes it even more doubly exciting that I'm having fun both painting and playing, which is just great. I may have mentioned it in a previous video, I'm not sure, I can't really remember because I've got a memory like a sieve, uh, but yeah, I've just recently bought the Zombicide Black Plague uh, big old box, which is actually full of zombies. Uh, which <laughs> I love zombies. Yeah, any kind of zombie film I'll watch, even though I know most of them are gonna be pants. Uh, but yeah, love zombies. So you can be seeing loads of zombies being painted up soon because I'm gonna incorporate those into some Hero Quest games. As I say, I am doing a lot of homebrew stuff now. So yeah, I am gonna have a whole variety of well, extra mobs, monsters, big bosses uh, that don't actually come with Hero Quest, but are very much Hero Quest themed. Or even D&D sort of themed. So yeah, keep an eye out for those coming up very soon, guys. As always, though, yeah, leave comments down below if there's anything you want to see me particularly make or paint or try out. Um, yeah, let me know, because I do like trying out new things, whether it's painting schemes or different kind of building or making, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm going to be getting loads of XPS foam soon as well. So don't worry, guys, if you don't have 3D printers, because I know I do sort of 3D print a lot of terrain pieces, I am going to be making some boards up and some walls and stone floors and dungeony kind of stuff with some XPS foam soon. So yeah, keep an eye out for those videos as well. So I did consider leaving all the uh, the stonework as is, as well as obviously primed in black and in dry brush. It does have a bit of a, a stone look to it, but then I kind of felt it just looked a bit too well, a bit too light and bright. Um, I say this is meant to be a dungeon, so I'm reckoning it's going to be dark stones and everything's going to look grimy and messy. So yeah, using a good old uh, Army Painter Speed Paint Grey here. Just going to go over everything, just to give it that bit more of a, well, say a darker, grungier look. I mean, I could have gone over again with a dry brushing with white, but then I think I might, may have made it then go back to looking too light. Um, again, this is where, obviously, we're all different. We all have our own sort of needs and wants on how we like things to look. Um, and yeah, I think for me, the stonework needs to be that little bit darker. Um, but yeah, really pleased just how, how it looks. And it's definitely the kind of dungeon that I would want, uh, well, I want my heroes to go in um, and have a good old adventure. 
and even these fireplaces have a sort of a great great bit of detail in these um, and again sometimes I think you kind of forget that this is a board game and typically board games when you get sort of stuff in them um, yeah just cheap bits of plastic that don't really look anything like what they should do but the hero quest stuff yeah certainly does look absolutely amazing um, and yeah it looks obviously even better painted so I'm really pleased with how everything's coming on and that's a case of tackling them bookshelves um, and rather than just sort of painting everything kind of a brown I guess with the books um, yeah I'm gonna use sort of well just a few colors here um, your typical sort of like red yellow blue and green um, and yeah I'm gonna use these for all the bottles all the books um, and any sort of miscellaneous little bits here and there um, yeah th these are a nice sort of variety of well your typical looking green typical looking blue red and yellow um, just because yeah add a bit of color to all this brown that I've kind of got going on and changing the subject a little bit here obviously the joy of having a 3d printer does mean I can 3d print exactly what I want off um, so yeah with these bottles I'm gonna be sort of printing off some potion bottles again when I come to play games I do like to sort of immerse myself in having lots of 3d sort of physical things to sort of look at hold use um, so yes yeah, so I'm gonna be making up a lot of potion bottles a variety of colors obviously well yeah definitely gonna be using a red one there for a good old healing potion um, but again it's just fun a nice little fun thing to do with the other yeah, players being out like actually hand out a potion bottle so rather than just having it written down on a bit of paper they've kind of physically got a bottle that uh, well they know they can take in any kind of emergency so I have now got all the uh, the hero quest sort of expansion packs apart from obviously the one that's about to come out and that's the against the ogre horde so yeah guys if anyone here knows or works or does anything with Avalon Hill or Hasbro um, and it has the opportunity to be able to get me an early release well that would just be amazing um, I have been cheeky and messaged them but to avail yet yeah, I've not heard back I'm guessing because they are a rather large company and they get a ton of uh, requests so yeah if anyone does work for them and can put in a good word yeah I would love to be able to get hold of a pack as soon as and well get them bad boys painted as I've seen a few sort of clips and previews of everything as yeah I've seen some lovely big ogres um, yes yeah, definitely boss ones there as they seem to cover well a good couple of spaces which is just cool so yeah the fire I've had a little go at trying to do a bit of feathering uh, all I did with the red was I put the red on and then got my brush sort of wet and then just sort of like try to uh, feather it in uh, and again, kind of what I'm doing with the yellow here, putting the yellow on and just sort of basically trying to fin it into the red. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with how it came out. Again, simple little thing, made me happy and I thought, yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much everything now painted to how I'm happy with. So it is just a case of now going round and on anything that was metallic, uh, yeah, giving it a wash. And as you'll see, yeah, when I give things a wash, I give them a full on bath. Um, yeah again just because I like sort of, especially with the weapons as well I like the weapons to look like they've been sitting around hanging around uh, they've been used they are a bit bit old um, I may eventually go around and put a bit of blood spatter on some of these weapons again just to make them look like they have been used in a fight or two so um, yeah good old washes uh, definitely a great way of weathering things adding a bit more contrast into stuff um, especially when it comes to sort of yeah the metallic colors but yeah on the whole I am very pleased with how everything's come out I say I definitely had fun painting everything um, and I can't wait to use them now because I've used these before obviously pre or unpainted in a couple of games uh, so yeah it will be nice now for my next game to actually use all the furniture pieces uh, that are now painted and look well how they should look so I was probably at my desk like I say about three hours or so painting this uh, not 100% sure because I wasn't really paying much attention to the time uh, but certainly enjoyed painting them all and yeah love the fact that they are now all painted um, and as I say there's so much detail in these uh, these little miniature bits um, yeah absolutely awesome say so, plenty of sort of wood grain going on um, just love it yeah so I really can't wait now to show these off uh, and use these in my next game as again I, I love things to look right <laughs> um, so yeah which is why obviously I love using the proper board game lots of painted miniatures on clear bases so you can still see any terrain underneath um, and yeah absolutely pleased with how these come out especially with me doing a little painting of Mona Lisa there um, yeah I think my brushwork was absolutely perfect uh, or maybe I cheated and just printed it out and stuck it in maybe who knows um, but yeah 
I absolutely love how these all look. And if you've enjoyed the video, guys, yeah, don't forget to let me know down below, as I do love reading up to the comments. Uh, apologies, I don't always respond. I never sort of get enough time to do everything. Uh, but yeah, definitely leave comments down below. Let me know what you thought. Um, and maybe what you want to see, obviously, in any future videos, as I certainly do sort of listen to some of you, your advices and, well, what you want to see me do. Because, say, I do like trying new stuff out. This hobby is all about having fun. So a lot of the stuff I do, I do because obviously I want to use it in games. And a lot of the other stuff I do just because, well, I just want to have fun and paint stuff. Um, or 3D print stuff. Because, yeah, 3D printers are amazing things. As well as laser engravers. And funny enough, I am about to do a video soon where I make some dungeon floor tiles using a laser engraver. Um, yeah, the fact that they let anyone have lasers is just nuts because, well, it's a laser. <laughs> so yeah, here's all the uh, the printed uh, and painted bits um, on my printed uh, 3D sort of board. And yeah, just love how it all looks. Um, yeah, it makes a big difference. Things being painted as opposed to just, well, bits of grey plastic. Uh, things do sort of come to life a whole lot more. Um, but I do feel like I'm a big kid though when I'm sort of playing with these and obviously as you can see moving the doors around moving all the furniture bits and pieces and getting the, uh, the all the creatures and heroes as well as you can see yeah clear bases because well when you got them on the board you can't really see them and it does then look like the monsters and the heroes are just standing there which is just awesome and if you haven't yet seen those video guys yet yeah, there's loads of videos out showing me printing and painting all these miniatures as well as taking the original Hero Quest miniatures, um, taking their bases off, just so I can put them on, well, the clear bases as well. So yeah, go check out all the other videos, guys. There's lots, lots about there. Uh, there's a video on the screen, guys. Give that a click, see more of what I do. And don't forget, if you are new here or you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, as yet, yeah, this year, I really want to go out on a big bang and reach that, uh, that 100k subscribers. And um, with your help, yeah, I'll be able to do it. So like, share, subscribe, leave comments, all that good stuff. Uh, you guys all take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.